Today I want to show you how I wrote recent tool in EF Tools Match Graphic Overrides. We'll need to select our elements, then get the graphic overviews of the main element and then apply it to all the other elements. Overall, it's a simple tool, but let's have a look how it's written. So I'm in my Revit file and you can see that there are just four floors in the view right now. I'm going to override graphics in view of one of them and I'm going to set the surface pattern be red. Click on OK. Now let's go to EF Tutor tab and we need to create a new button or we'll use one of the empty ones. I'm going to take that button right here. Let's change an icon and we can open the script file. Now right here is the bare minimum you need for your script. We can go to EF Tutor GitHub page and there in library and snippets there is a template file I prepared in one of the previous videos. We can copy all of this and place it here. In this case we don't need any of these extras. And of course the name of the button is Match Override Graphics. So the way this tool is going to work, first we're going to run the tool. Then we will need to select our main element. And then every single element that is going to be selected is going to be matched with the same graphics as the main element. We won't need this import, we don't need any custom imports, and we don't need .NET imports for this tool. Variables, I'm going to remove the path to the script, and I'll leave the main ones. I don't think we're going to use any classes, and maybe we're going to make some local functions. We're going to see. Now in main, just going to click clean it up, and we can start coding. First of all, we need to select our main element, and then we need to start selecting all other elements. While we're just testing the idea, we're just going to select two elements. It's going to be element one, and we can use pre-made function from PyRevit, pick element. If you're going to select any function or element and click on Ctrl B, we can go to the place where it's located. In my case, it opened me a selection file, which is part of PyRevit.Revit. In here, there are different functions. This one is pick element, pick element by category, and so on. Close it. And the same way, I'm going to select the second element. And we need some visual feedback to make sure that we actually selected something. So I'm going to print the elements that I'm going to get. Let's go to Revit. First of all, let's update our PyRevit. So the name of the button will be updated too. Okay, it's updated. Let's go back to EF Tutor. Here's our tool. Click on it. As you can see, everything is grayed out. It means that something is happening. I can select my first element and my second element. And in this console, it prints out these two elements. This is exactly what we want. Let's add some comments. Now we need to find a way to get graphics overrides. And then similarly, we're also gonna try and set graphic overrides to the second element. Let's go to Revit API docs and have a look. I'm gonna choose 2022. When you don't know where to look, try searching for something similar. For example, if I write override, it gives me override graphic settings. This is the element that we need to get for main element and then apply to all the other elements we're going to select. Right here it says it's a setting to override display of elements in a view. This already worked with them before, I know that they are part of the view class. So when you override element, the first of all is it's the view that holds this information and not the element. So if I go to methods and write here override and we can scroll through and see all the functions. And there's get category overrides and right here we want to get element overrides i'm going to open it in a new tab right here is the description get graphic overrides for an element in the view and to do this we need to use our active view and then provide element id and then it's going to return as the graphic overrides let's try it copy the name of the method so i'm going to create variable graphics and i'm going to get it from the currently active view then we're going to paste the name of the method get elements overrides and as we saw right here we just need to provide element id in this case, I'm going to take element 1 and get its ID. Now, let's print and see if we get anything or we get some errors. Let's go back to Revit. Click on the button. Select first element, select second element. Right here, we get override graphic settings. Hopefully, getting the right ones. Now, same as before, go back to Revit API and start looking for the way to set your graphic overrides. This also should be part of the view class. I'm gonna just scroll until we see something with the set. Right here we have set element overrides. Click on it. This time it has two arguments. First one is the element ID and graphic override settings. I'm gonna copy this method and go to PyCharm. So same as before, I'm gonna use the active view by using doc. I'm gonna set element overrides, set second element with the same graphics. These graphics we got right here and the second element we are getting right here. Let's try to run it and see. Click on it, select our main element, select the second element, and it gives us an issue. But this is totally normal, because it's telling us that we are attempting to modify model outside of the transaction. Whenever you want to make any changes to your project, we need to create a transaction. Create it and declare variable t, and then use transaction constructor. We need to provide doc and title. Transaction is just one of the classes in Revit API. And if we search for it, 
effect you can see here transaction uh, context like object to guard any changes made in Revit model. And you can see here what can we do with it. In our case, we're gonna use this constructor. We're gonna provide a document and a name of the change. Then we need to start our transaction and we need to commit it somewhere. And all the changes should be between these two statements. In our case, I'm gonna move it here. And let's run and have a look what's gonna happen. I'm going to click match override graphics. Select the main element and another one. And you can see it has updated its graphic overrides. This is exactly what we want. Now let's add some kind of message so we know that we are selecting either the main one or the other one. So user is not confused what to do. To let our user know what to select, we can use some pre-made functions made in forms. I'm gonna bring PyRevit docs. Right here you can see that there is a warning bar. It's gonna make an orange bar on the top and right there is some text. And we can provide here text that we want. To use it we need to import forms and then with forms warning and then title we can do some stuff. So this is element 1. This one is gonna be element 2. I'm going to copy it right here. Right here we're gonna write pick main element and here pick elements to match graphics. And let's remove our comments and go to Revit and try it. So same as before, select the main element and the other one. As you can see it works. Now, how can we make so we can select more than one element? We will need to make this on a constant loop. We can use either for loop or while loop. Whenever you're gonna use the while loops, please make sure that you have a break statement somewhere, because otherwise you can create an infinite loop and your application is gonna crash together with Revit, because it will never end. And then we need some action. So every time I'm gonna say that element is none, then I'm gonna use try and accept statements. If something is not gonna be successful, I'm gonna break out of the loop. And in try, I'm gonna get the element with Revit pick element. We can use this forms warning bar and put it above our loop. Then we need to move everything to the right. This we won't need. This graphic setting is related to the first element. So let's put it there. Get main graphic override. Pick main element. This is gonna be a loop. Keep selecting elements to match. One thing in here, if we're not going to select any elements and we're going to cancel it, we need to make sure that we make a check for it. So if not element, we're going to break out of this loop as well. And I know that in the warning bars, there is handle escape. I'm not going to set it to true. Now we don't want to print graphics anymore. And this we're going to place in the while loop. So every time we click on an element, the change happens instantly. Normally, I would avoid placing any transaction inside of the loop. But for this case, I actually want to happen every time I click on the element instantly. Let's go to Revit and run it again. This time I'm gonna select this one with an empty graphic override, try to match it. And we have an error. Let's have a look. Element 2 is not, this is correct. This is because I renamed it right here. I need to copy this name of the element, place it here. Element 1 is gonna be main element. Okay, let's run it again, select the main element, and now we can see that we can change multiple. And when we are finished, we can click on escape, and then it's okay. Then let's check if it's gonna crash if we're not gonna select the first element. I'm gonna click on match override graphics, click escape. Right here, it gives us an error saying that non-type has no ID. This is in line 58. Go back to your code, and then right here, you can see that the issue came from here because it didn't get any element right here, and we tried to get ID from it. So we need to make another conditional statement, if not main element, then we're just gonna alert and exit the script. I'm gonna write no element was selected, please try again. And in here what's important is the exit script equals true. And optional we can also add title to be equal to the name of our tool. If you never use this forms alert, you can read more about it in this PyRevit docs. I'm gonna search for alert and it is right here. So you can see here the code snippets and the screenshot examples of how it's gonna look. You can even make different buttons there. And this is mainly just to report some errors for me. So let's try again. Now if I run the tool and then instantly click on escape, it's gonna tell me no element was selected, please try again. Now I'm gonna select this element and I can click clicking and it instantly making the change. Right here you can see that it right here match override graphics. 